Brian Passink, we know this is one of your favorite weeks of the year. Oh, it's it's the best. Love the SEC tournament. Uh, this time of year just doesn't get any better. And love when the tournament's in Nashville. So looking forward uh, to getting there and, and watching some great basketball. I think the SEC is the best basketball league in America from top to bottom. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It really will be. And for the Crimson Tide, Alabama earned a double by the number three seed for this event. Just if you could just kind of walk us through the journey this team has been on all throughout the year. Well, it's been an incredible season. And if you would have told me before the season that Alabama would finish tied for second in the SEC with a double by and, um, you know, have a chance to uh, make a run in Nashville and, and be locked in uh, to the NCAA tournament. Uh, I would have taken it in a heartbeat. When you consider all that was lost, um, you had uh, Brandon Miller, maybe the best player in program history, uh, goes to the NBA, Noah Clowney, a uh, couple guys transfer out. You, you've got an entirely new coaching staff with all three former assistants getting head coaching jobs. Uh, for Nate Oates to have this program right back where it's been since he's been in Tuscaloosa is just a, amazing. And Nate Oates is coming into this year uh, was considered one of the top coaches in college basketball. But in my opinion, this has been his best coaching job because uh, it was a lonely coach's office uh, in the fall, in the spring after the season because of uh, his guys getting head coaching jobs. And he's been able to go to the portal uh, and get some of the best players uh, transfers in and, and a top 10 recruiting class. And to be able to mesh that together with an entirely new staff is amazing. It's one of the reasons uh, he's still he's being considered for a national coach of the year, um, along with several others. But uh, he's done one of the best coaching jobs in college basketball this year. Yeah, speak to us for a moment about the new assistant coaches that you've gotten to know uh, over the course of this past year. Ryan Pannone, Austin Clonch, Preston Murphy, and the roles they've kind of fit into with this staff. Well, this staff is as good as it gets in college basketball because you go – uh, and get a guy uh, like Ryan Pannone, who was a former G League head coach at the Birmingham squ Squadron, so very familiar with this area. Uh, he was on the bench uh, for the New Orleans Pelicans as an NBA assistant. So it's not often that you can go to the NBA and, and get an established former head coach and assistant like Ryan Pannone, and, and he's been a huge addition to this staff in so many different ways. Austin Clonch is, is another example of a guy that – maybe before Nate Oates was at Alabama, that, that you're probably not going to be able to lure a sitting head coach uh, to an assistant coach's uh, position. Uh, but Austin Clotch was his conference coach of the year a couple of times and, and comes over and uh, is doing an, a great job on the court and off as a recruiter. And Preston Murphy considered uh, one of the best recruiters uh, in college basketball as an assistant coach over the years and uh, also a great X's and O's guy. So this staff uh, is as good as it gets in college basketball. And because of guys like Charlie Henry and Antoine Petway um, and, and uh, Brian Hodgson, because of the job that they did and and their and what they did, even in leaving, going and getting Division One head coaching jobs, all three of those guys did a great job this year and had terrific seasons, by the way. The fact that they had so much success as assistants and now head coaches, you're able uh, to attract some of the best, not just assistant coaches in the game, but some of the best, um, you know, uh, a head coach in Austin Clodge, an NBA assistant in Ryan Pannone. So uh, this staff is, is top notch in college basketball. NATO is considered one of the best coaches in the country. And now he has a staff that's considered one of the best as well. The accolades keep rolling in for Mark Sears. We know how vital he's been to this Crimson Tide team this year, but now uh, an All-American and All-SEC performer, just how important ha of a role has he played? Where would Alabama be without Mark Sears this season? Well, he's been terrific. I, I think he's been one of the best players, not just in the SEC, but in college basketball, and was so happy for him uh, to get first-team All-SEC honors and All-American honors. Uh, was one of the front runners for SEC Player of the Year, and I think in, in a normal year, he, he might have won that award. Dalton Connect was terrific down the stretch. And considering Tennessee won the league, I don't have a problem uh, with Connect winning that award. But Mark Sears was right there all year long, leading the SEC in scoring. And, and happy for him that a guy that was a little bit under the radar coming into the season as a preseason second team 
all SEC guy is now getting all American honors. And listen, it, it's, as you know, Roger, it's far from a one man show, but Mark Sears has been leading the way for this Alabama team. And for a guy that most uh, didn't think was good enough to play in the SEC uh, for him to go to Ohio, have the, the career that he had there transfer back home uh, to the great state of Alabama and do what he's done in a couple of seasons is amazing. And I think he's put himself in a position uh, to play in the NBA one day. Now, I hope he comes back. He was honored at senior day. He does have uh, eligibility left. So I, I think Nate Oates will hold a scholarship for him if he decides to come back. That's to be determined. Uh, but Mark Sears has uh, clearly made himself through hard work and, uh, and, and, and the talent that he has developing that talent in Tuscaloosa has made himself into one of the best players in college basketball. Really love to see that for Mark Sears as this roster is getting closer to being a fully healthy or Latrell Reitzel Jr. coming back. We know Rowling Griffin has been out as well with injury, but just where do things stand for those guys getting ready for this SEC tournament? How important will they be for Alabama? Well, I think for this team, uh, the most important thing is health. And you could see the last four or five games of the season, uh, how uh, important Latrell Reitzel has been to this team. And even in his absence, uh, they didn't play as well. And Mark Sears leads the team and the accolades that he's gotten are well-deserved, but nobody has progressed more over the course of the season than Latrell Reitzel. Uh, before he went out with a head injury, was leading the SEC in three-point percentage. Uh, one of the best, obviously one of the best shooters in college basketball, but an underrated defender, an underrated ball handler. Um, he, he is a veteran that really, when he was playing well, this team was playing well. And, and uh, his loss was was a big deal for this Alabama team. Fortunately, you're able to win a couple of games without him. But with him, we see how valuable he's been with what he did against Arkansas and securing the double buy for Alabama. He, he was huge throughout that game, but especially late. So great to have him back. And maybe the most important thing about getting the double buy is getting – uh, guys healthy like Rylan Griffin, who did not play in that game, went out uh, with a lower leg injury uh, in the game against Florida. Hopefully he'll be back Friday against what a lot of people think would be the Florida Gators. They, they still have to uh, win the, the second round game. Uh, but if Rylan's back and healthy, Latrell looks to be full speed. I think this Alabama team has a great chance to make a long run, not just in Nashville, but in the NCAA tournament. Speaking of the matchups we could see coming up this weekend, obviously a lot depends on the games before that. But again, the Florida Gators, a potential first-round opponent, quarterfinal opponent for the Crimson Tide. Uh, the game in Tuscaloosa was a thriller, went to overtime. Alabama got the win. It was a very quick turnaround after the Tennessee game to go to Gainesville. A tough loss for the Crimson Tide. Uh, what would you expect if we do get that round three matchup between Alabama and Florida? Yeah, if that's how it plays out, I, I think our guys would be super excited to play Florida uh, on a neutral floor after a couple hard fought games, especially the one in Tuscaloosa. And you mentioned that was a tough spot going to Gainesville, quick turnaround after an emotional day and night against the Tennessee balls uh, just a couple of days before. And, and that's why I think health is so important. I think Alabama would love a shot at Florida fully healthy. Now we don't know if that's the case, if Rylan Griffin, uh, will be 100% healthy or even available in the game on Friday. But I know the guys will be excited. And health is so important this time of year. And, and regardless, I think Alabama will be more healthy than they were at the end of the season. Obviously, Tennessee, the one seed. Kentucky, the number two seed, just beat Tennessee last Saturday in Knoxville. How well are the Wildcats playing right now? On We know it was a tough day in Lexington for the Crimson Tide a few weeks ago. Well, you know, a lot of people are talking about Tennessee as a potential Final Four team and national champion. Uh, I'm not sure that Kentucky is not playing better than anybody in the SEC. They they proved it um, on Saturday in Knoxville, obviously a very difficult place to play against a really good team. But Kentucky is really hitting their stride. They're, they're young, as they typically are under John Calipari, but uh, they're starting to defend at a higher level. They, they shoot it so well from the three-point line. This is one of the best shooting Kentucky teams that we've seen in decades. So they're a team that could – uh, stay in Nashville a while and also in the NCAA tournament. Uh, the thing that makes the SEC so good is you look uh, from about one through six, and I think all six of those teams in the top six 
uh, could make a run to the second weekend or better. If you told me and you just picked a, a team out of a hat, like a Florida, Kentucky, Alabama, Auburn, South Carolina, if any of those teams end up as an elite in the Elite Eight or a Final Four, it wouldn't surprise me at all. And I think that's why some people in the national media consider the SEC to be the best league in the country. Well, we talked about it at the jump, but uh, it's one of your favorite weeks of the year, the SEC tournament. And for Alabama in the Nate Oates era, this has to be one of the favorite settings for college basketball, Bridgestone Arena. Uh, I mean, unreal memories we've built uh, over the last few years here in this tournament and playing in Bridgestone Arena. Yeah, and listen, I mean, we, we've we jokingly called it uh, Natesville. You know, Nate Oates is 10-0 and in the city of Nashville, have not lost there. His only SEC tournament loss came at Tampa a couple years ago. It's usually in Nashville and NATO's and Alabama basketball have been so good in that building at Bridgestone, and hopefully that continues. And last year is one of the great memories in Alabama basketball history is Bama beat Texas A&M in the championship game, and it felt like Coleman Coliseum. I mean, it was 95% Alabama fans rocking, and I think a lot of Bama fans will travel north to Nashville, and hopefully it'll be a, another great setting, and hopefully it'll be a long stay. We look forward to it. Brian Passing, thank you so much for joining us. Safe travels to Nashville. Uh, best of luck with you and Chris and Tom coming up on the call starting on Friday for the Crimson Tide of the SEC Tournament. Roll Tide. Thank you. Roll Tide. Thanks, Roger.